I'm here in the Harvard Community Garden in front of Lowell House. It was just begun last year by a group of students, and it's really a testament to what a small handful of students who decide they want to see something happen can do, and the whole community has really benefited from that. The way I like to look at REP is as a peer-to-peer -peer advocacy group for environmental sustainability, but also working on really cool side projects that have uh, a wider impact on students in other places as well. The Green Living Program at HBS is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, awareness program. We have a series of six competitions uh, between sections, so there's a lot of excitement around it. So for example, we had uh, one on the benefits of using tap water as opposed to bottled water and the impact that has on the environment. The weatherization of the Phillips Brooks House was originally a dream the Environmental Action Committee had, where OFS and students and facility folks had figured out what weatherization measures could be taken to reduce energy use in the building. So it was students up in the chimney, shoving insulation there, caulking the windows, changing the light bulbs. Um, really fun day. It's great to see Harvard students get their hands dirty. In our older lab buildings, they're 100% outside air, constant volume buildings. So whatever we bring in from the outside, we uh, clean it, condition it, uh, and then exhaust it out of the building, we're losing a lot of uh, potential energy. The air acuity system is a demand controlled ventilation system that basically utilizes a central processing system where you're pulling columns of air back to a series of sensors that monitor and measure the indoor environmental quality, then operate the variable air volume boxes that adjust the airflow to the lab based off of those readings. So in the FXB building, we were able to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 327 metric tons. The energy savings that we realized were around roughly $127,000 a year for this whole building. Uh, the building we're in front of, Gallatin Hall, it's originally a 1926 building, um, but we put a lot of green features into it. One of the areas that we were hoping to be innovative was in the bedroom. And if someone comes in and opens the window, it will automatically shut off the fan cool unit. When an occupant leaves, the aux sensor notices that and the temperature will drop four to six degrees. So we had energy conservation competitions. Students could come in and different features to see what electrical use is, hot water, and also pull up Hamilton Hall and do the same thing so they can see where they stand. Here in chemistry, um, we decided that the best thing we could do is being one of the larger energy users on campus, that it should be a great place to save energy and thus save lots of money. We use water to do rinsing of uh, glassware, and uh, so we actually use low flow aerators. And uh, we also put in these uh, devices that actually let you really reduce the amount of volume that you can use. So if you, you don't have stuff splash over you, and it also saves a lot of water conservation. So this is our real-time CFM monitor. It's a real-time display of all the exhaust coming out of the hoods in the lab. And they're positioned right outside the doors of all the new labs as a visual reminder for people to shut their sash. It costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars to operate the fumelets. And actually right now we're cutting it down by about 70%. So it's a substantial savings and we're getting full support by the researchers. Harvard's Recycling Now is the best in the Ivy League, 55% has been for 10 years. Here in the dorms, we have reuse shelves, which we started this year working in conjunction with the Resource Efficiency Program, where students can leave clothes, books, furniture, etc., for their peers to share. Then at the end of the year, we have donation stations where students moving out can leave their clothes, unwanted books, and other materials. Last year we recovered over 200 tons of material, including 22 tons of clothes, 8 tons of books, and we do that in the academic and administrative buildings as well. We want to spend Harvard's money on teaching and research, not on waste disposal. The major way that we've reduced our environmental impact is through the development of our fully organic landscape management program. What is organic landscaping? It's managing your landscapes without the use of harmful chemicals and the use of synthetic fertilizers which can leach into your water sources. One major component of the many techniques that we use are compost teas. Compost tea is 
a aerated water solution, which we add various food sources with a great um, compost to coax beneficial organisms that we can add into our soils. Um, another great benefit that we've noticed is the deeper root growth. We've minimized our water needs. In Harvard Yard alone, we've minimized um, our water use by over a million gallons of water the first year of the implementation of our organic program. A green team is a group of people that work together to improve the life of the planet in a very local way. We're the Green Team! A lot of people don't have the information they might want to have about this, they, but they want to do the right thing. Uh, and so that dissemination of information is, is important for the Green Team. One thing that I really like about being on the Green Team is I'm seeing that my presence on this team and my presence in the office as a rep of the Green Team is really making a difference and um, reducing the waste that's coming out of our office.